Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Welcome to today's message from Harvest Chapel International. We believe the message will be a blessing to you as you imbibe God's truth. God bless you. Indeed is your glory and the lifter up of your head. If you believe that, why don't you lift up your two hands, put those hands together, give the Lord a clap, give the Lord a shout, give Him a shout of great victory. He will lift up your head, He will deliver you, He will strengthen you, He will keep you, He will heal you, He will guide you, He will protect you. He will preserve you. He is the God who lifts up your head. Somebody clap. Somebody shout. Somebody scream. Somebody declare that my head has been lifted up. Thou art the shield around me. You are my king. You are my God. You are my healer. You are Jehovah, you are there for me, you are my pavilion, you are Shama, you are God all by yourself. Give him another shot of victory. In Psalm 70, verse 1 and verse 2. Psalm 70 verse 1 and verse 2 The Bible tells us Make haste O God To deliver me I declare that may God make haste To deliver you And it says Make haste O God to help me May the Lord Make haste to help you And then verse 2 says let them be ashamed and confounded that seek after my soul let them be turned backward and put to confusion that desire my head this morning i make a declaration for somebody that may the lord quicken his health for you may the lord quicken his health for you may the lord quicken his deliverance for you may the lord quicken his salvation for you May the Lord quicken his protection for you. May the Lord quicken his preservation for you. You will rise up out of the ashes. You will rise up stronger. You will rise up better. You will rise up more blessed. I declare concerning somebody this morning that may Jehovah lead you from one victory to another. May Jehovah be your deliverer. May Jehovah be your help. May Jehovah be your provider. I speak for somebody here this morning that may Jehovah cause his abundant grace to be sufficient for you. May it be that there will be a sudden miracle. May it be that there will be a sudden breakthrough. May it be that there will be a sudden deliverance for you. I speak for somebody this morning. May weakness turn into strength. May shame turn into glory. May darkness turn into light. May poverty turn into riches for you. Because the Lord is the lifter up of your head. He is a shield all around you. I speak to somebody. May Matthew turn to good news. I declare. May the cloud move. May the sun break forth. May the sun break forth. May the sun break forth. May the darkness end. May the light break forth. May morning come. I prophesy the morning star over somebody here this morning. The morning star of power. The morning star of good news. The morning star of deliverance. The morning star of favor. The morning star of healing. I prophesy the morning star over somebody this morning. I declare concerning somebody that every bondage is broken. Every captivity is broken. Every chain is broken. The doors are open. The windows are open. The heavens are open. New blessing. New blessing. New blessing. New blessing are coming unto you. 
I speak for somebody here this morning that when they think that this is the end, may it be the beginning of a new lease of life. When they think that everyone has given up on you, may Jehovah cause a rising up. May Jehovah cause his light. May he become your strength. I declare for somebody, may there be an exchange in the place of your strength. May Jehovah give you his strength. In the place of your name, may Jehovah give you his name. In the place of your position, may Jehovah give you his position. May he be the battle axe for you. May he fight for you. May he rob victory for you. I speak for somebody that the delay has ended. God's speed has come to you. God's speed has come to you. I speak for somebody this morning. There is divine acceleration. Hey, Rakababo Sekeya. Miki Baka Tesekeya. Reke Beke Tesekeya. I hear thunder. I see lightning. God is shaking everything that can be shaken because of you. And even that which cannot be shaken because of you, it has been shaken. God is bringing a shift. I speak for somebody this morning. May your atmosphere change. May your atmosphere change. Because the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, He has come with His mercy. He has come with His judgment. He has come with His power. I speak for somebody this morning. I hear the word. You are rising up. 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 If you are the one now, give the Lord a shout. Somebody is receiving some good news. I declare that in this week, there will be a dispatch of good news for you. I see something like a dove and that dove is landing on the heads of some people in this congregation and I hear the word peace in the midst of every turbulence peace is coming peace is coming peace is coming and Jehovah is opening one door after another door there is increase there is multiplication there is grace and there is favor and I see somebody beginning to laugh. I see somebody beginning to smile. I see somebody beginning to jump. I see somebody singing a new song. And I hear the word, the song of praise. Let somebody give the Lord a shout. The enemy is defeated sickness and disease they are defeated captivity has been set loose and you are rising up i hear that word you are rising up oh you are rising up my brother oh you are rising up my sister and nothing is stopping you indeed nothing can stop you because the heavens over your head are open and you are getting higher and higher and better and better you are getting more and more glorious if you are that one let me hear you give a shout of praise and acknowledgement to the lord he is a shield around us and let me tell you one more thing when you look in second thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 3 the lord is making a declaration for somebody this morning because we are not here by ourselves we are here because he planned us to be here we are not following online by ourselves we are following because there is a plan and there is a purpose for you and he says but the lord is faithful i speak to somebody's situation i speak into somebody's family I speak into somebody's business and arrangement. I speak concerning somebody's situation now. I speak concerning some news that somebody has received now. That the Lord is faithful and the Lord will establish you. I speak for somebody who is feeling like stumbling. Somebody who is not feeling secure. Somebody who is not feeling steady. I prophesy that may the Lord establish you. May the Lord stabilize you. 
May the Lord consolidate you. May the Lord bring you to a place of strength. May the Lord bring you to a place of stability. But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you. And I declare for somebody that may the Lord keep you from evil. May evil be far away from you. Put your hands together for the Lord and give him another shout. Lift up your two hands if you can, please. As these hands are lifted up, I hear the word escape. You have escaped from every snare of the fowler. Every snare is broken because Jehovah has come to your help. A champion has come on the scene. The battle axe has come in your favor. Oh, as your hands are lifted up, I release you to a place of victory. I release you to a place of increase. I release you to a place of deliverance. I release you to a place of joy. I release you to a place of domination. I'm speaking for somebody this morning. Nobody is speaking for you, but God is speaking for you. Jehovah is speaking for somebody. Jehovah is speaking for somebody. I declare that may your angels be active. May there be an angelic visitation. May there be an angelic intervention. May an angel be sent uh, to minister to your need and to speak on your behalf. And may you be taken far from evil. Father, bless your people. Father, speak to us with a voice that we can understand and comprehend. Father, stir up strength and faith in us. Father, open the heavens and grant us glory and grant us grace and favor. And let the name of Christ be exalted. And as that name is exalted, may he draw all men and women to himself. Every evil is condemned. Every captivity is broken. Every bad news is turned around. God has visited you. Put your hands together for the Lord and take your seats this morning. In this month, we are looking at the subject of working well together. And this morning, I want to share on the subject true fellowship. If we are going to work well together, we need to understand that we are in fellowship, first of all, with God, and then secondly, with each other. <clears throat> and if we understand what it means to have true fellowship, I believe that as a church, as a people, we are going to grow from strength to strength, from victory to victory, because the Bible says that we cannot really say that we love God and yet we do not love our brother or our sister. First, first John chapter 4 verse 20. We are just going to look at a few things on this subject this morning. But I believe that God is faithful. God will establish you and God will deliver you from evil. Let me hear somebody say yes. If a man say that I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? True fellowship, it comes from one, our fellowship with God, our Father. That we know him as God and it must be reflected. In our fellowship with each other so you cannot say that you love God you are a servant of God you are a prophet or a priest of God and yet hate your brother hallelujah hallelujah and the word fellowship it's coming out of when we look at the greek word there are two words that i'm going to use this morning or two meanings first of all we have koinonia koinonia talks about we being on common ground if we are going to have true fellowship we must all know that we are on common ground the common ground is the blood of jesus and his salvation that he ran for us everything else that we are adding to our names is not necessary hallelujah 
So that koinonia is fellowship and the meaning is that we are standing on common ground. In other words, we have a relationship with each other. You are my brother, you are my sister. And that ends it. Hallelujah. I must build on that foundation. Whether you are tall or you are short or you come from my tribe or you come from another tribe or you are educated or you are not educated. That is not the basis of koinonia. The basis of koinonia is the shed blood of Jesus. They said that in that Christ there is no Greek nor Jew. We are all one in Christ. That is the basis of true fellowship. Hallelujah. So I should be able, when I come to church, or when I'm not outside church, I should not feel so high that I cannot condescend to people of low degree. Because we are on one ground. We are two fellows in one ship. Let me hear somebody say amen. Because you, anyway, you did not have the option of being born in the family in which you were born. You just came out and your surname was a nice sounding name. I also came out and my surname was like standard and lightning. I didn't choose it. I just came out and all I could hear was Chi, Chi, here. And I was coming out of Kolewoko. You just happened when you were coming out, you could hear push 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 and when you came out only white people were surrounding you you didn't have any choice about that but now in christ we are all one in christ we are all one the one blood that is true all of us is the blood of jesus koinonia True fellowship must be based on we having common ground, common interests, common objectives. And our, our major objective must be to build the kingdom of God, not our own personal kingdoms. Hallelujah. So when God shows you something small, don't decide that now you are, cut, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are starting a new church somewhere else in your room. We all want to build the kingdom. Hallelujah. And the other meaning of a, a fellowship in the Greek is a word that is, uh, you know, the, I'm pronouncing it, is, the pronunciation is metokos. And if you want to understand metokos, let's look at Philippians chapter 1 verse 27. First, we have a relationship. A relationship with each other. And that relationship is a vital relationship. Somebody say amen. That is how we can grow as a church. That is true fellowship. But in Philippians chapter 1 verse 27, he said, Only let your conversation be as becoming the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand firm in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel the other meaning of fellowship is partnership metocost is partnership so first i'm in a relationship with you secondly we are in partnership we are working together our conversation is as becoming the gospel of christ hallelujah we are all working for the building of the kingdom as if we are in the same enterprise and when the enterprise profits we are all partners and so we profit in it so let us understand that true fellowship means that first of all i am related to you secondly i am a partner with you hallelujah so if i don't behave well the enterprise will come down when the enterprise comes down all of us are coming down and when I relate well with you and I see you as a partner somebody that is helping somebody that is also lifting up the name of Jesus and projecting the kingdom then we can have some true fellowship 
First John chapter 1 verse 3 and verse 4 the Bible tells us first John chapter 1 it said that which we have seen and heard and declare unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and then he continues and said that truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus so fellowship with one with another coming out of our fellowship with the father and his son jesus we are talking about true fellowship let me hear somebody say amen and if we are going to have true fellowship based on this relationship and this partnership then there are certain things that must characterize our lives ephesians chapter 4 verse 25 if i can get it in the message bible it will help verse 25 and verse 26 i believe that if we are going to have true fellowship based on the fact that we have our father god and then we are working with each other then we must learn to be sincere with each other hallelujah you must learn to be sincere with me i must learn to be sincere with you let us stop pretending in church hallelujah let us be real people who are involved in this partnership who are involved in a relationship who have a common ground and that common ground is jesus christ and what this adds up to is this no more lies hallelujah hallelujah am i speaking to somebody in church this morning no more lies he says and no more pretense don't say one thing in front of the person and behind the person you cut the person to pieces don't smile with the person if you want if you are not smiling don't smile hallelujah and let me know that you don't smile with me don't smile with me and then behind me you will say words that cannot be uttered in church and sometimes those words come out from the mouth of church members supposed to be spiritual people but in this time may there be true fellowship and in that true fellowship it says no more lies no more pretend tell your neighbor the truth hallelujah and let me add when they tell you the truth also accept it as the truth some of us can't accept the truth sometimes the truth hurts but when you receive it it's like medicine it will do you good hallelujah but you tell the truth in love he says that's why i said tell your neighbor the truth but then he asks something he says in christ's body we are all connected I'm connected to you you are connected to me hallelujah and we are connected to each other after all when you lie to others you end up lying to yourself hallelujah you end up believing lies about yourself if you are tall you are tall if you are not tall you are not tall stop lying to yourself that you are what you are not hallelujah but the good thing is that everybody is important everybody is needed everybody can work together that is why it is the working together that brings a harmony that we can have a harmony in church hallelujah we need those who talk a lot they have to talk for us we need those who are quiet that will be introspective we need those who are fighters we need those who are come but when it is all coming together we are a church hallelujah so don't lie don't pretend and then he says that <laughs> go ahead and be angry if you look at the 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 the, 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 the amplified version he says when you are angry and we can be angry let's not behave as if we don't get angry give me a wave you do get angry about various things even this morning you have gotten angry before coming to church as you are sitting here your, your your face is beginning to to turn a little bit you know in the local balance when he uh, you are spoiling your face because of the anger but he says that in case you get angry at injustice do 
not sin do not let your anger cause you shame don't let your anger last until the sun goes down some of us our anger has lasted for years hallelujah it has broken relationships and sometimes it doesn't just break the relationship it breaks other people's relationships too because you're angry with me you'll be angry with anybody who is also my friend hallelujah so i'll be working with you i'm your friend on monday on, on on saturday i'm your friend on sunday on monday i haven't done anything to you but because you are angry with my friend you will now become angry with me church people hallelujah hallelujah he says that in case you get angry don't let the sound go down but the moment you start thinking about that you will forgive hallelujah so if we are going to have true fellowship my friends let's be sincere with each other zechariah chapter 8 verse 16 he says that there's a certain judgment that we must pass zechariah chapter 8 verse 16 we must have some we, for us to work together well my friends our fellowship must be true it must be true it must not be a false kind of fellowship it says these are the things that you shall do no my one speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor then he says there is a certain judgment that you must execute but that judgment is a judgment of truth and peace if you are going to tell somebody something and at the end of it the person becomes your enemy in church don't say it hallelujah if you are whatever you are going to say if the way you say it will bring enmity change the way you say it so that after you have said it there will be edification hallelujah speak the truth but speak it in love Ephesians 4 15 and 16 so that at the end of it we will grow at the end of it we will become better as a church true fellowship means that we must be sincere with each other and if you are doing something wrong and somebody says sister what you are doing is wrong take it in good faith deacon pastor elder biggie man biggie woman spiritual joe spiritual mary if you are doing something wrong and somebody says this thing that you are doing this is not this is the effect is having on me listen to the person because we are connected one to another somebody says amen one other thing that will help us to have true fellowship is what the bible tells us in Ephesians, in galatians chapter 6 verse 2 let us learn to care for each other hallelujah i don't know how many of us this morning looking very handsome very beautiful even before you came to church this morning whether you were able to call somebody and ask the person how are you doing i'm coming to church will you come to church not to talk about yesterday or friday or thursday or wednesday or tuesday or five days ago caring means going beyond the shallow pepsi then smiles or colgate smiles or close up smiles the bible says bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of christ let's be there for it true fellowship means that we should bear one another's burdens not just be condemning and judging one another hallelujah something will change in this church something must change in the church let us be real people let's stop the pretense but let us be there for each other let's look at romans chapter 15 verse 1 romans chapter 15 verse 1 romans chapter 15 verse 1 you that are strong and there are a lot of strong people in this church or a lot of people who think they are strong sometimes you think you are strong until you meet a stronger person then you realize that your strength is weakness hallelujah but for the sake of those who think that they are strong 
It says, those, your strength will be shown by your ability to bear the infirmities of the weak. Hallelujah. I know there are a lot of perfect people in the church. There are a lot of people who have never sinned in the church. There's a lot of people who have never fallen into any temptation. There are a lot of holy, righteous, pious people in the church. You are wonderful. From the time you were born, you, were, you became a Christian. From the time you came out of your mother's womb. Hallelujah. But if you are strong, show your strength by helping a weak person. Hallelujah. That is true fellowship. True fellowship is the ability of the strong man to hold the weaker person and says that I am helping you so that you also become strong. Hallelujah. I'm not pushing you down so that I become better, so that I look good. So all of you in this church and whoever may be listening to me, that you know that you are strong. We thank God you are strong. But then the evidence of your strength, the Bible says that you have to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Hallelujah. May we learn to bear one another's burdens not only on Sundays. I know people in this church who are caring for other people in the church. They don't make any noise about it. But we need more of such people who will be able to bear the infirmities of the weak, who will be able to tell that young girl or that young boy that understand what you are going through. When I was in university, I also had those challenges. Many people were knocking on my door. They were telling me things. I had all those feelings. Whenever I saw that person, it was as if, you know, uh, they had put something through my body. I began to shake. Even I began to, 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 to stammer, although I'm not a stammerer. I understand what you are going through. When that happens to you, begin to speak in tongues. Help the person. Help the person. Let's help each other. There are young people amongst us. There are people who in years are old, but in the faith they are young. They need help. True fellowship means the stronger person must help the weaker person. Hallelujah that is the determination of your strength that is the proof of your strength when you're able to help somebody so that we can grow together let none be lost let none, none give up on the way when you reach out to somebody and the person says i'm having a hard time i am not being able to deal with this situation the person needs help the person does not need condemnation or does not need amplification of what he's doing which is wrong somebody say amen i like the way you are quiet this morning that we talk about true fellowship true fellowship is not one day in a week True fellowship is every day of the week. And sometimes that phone call or that proper WhatsApp message will keep that person from sin. Hallelujah. Maybe at the time that you are speaking to her and telling her that, you know, be strong, my sister. At that time, that young boy is sitting in front of her and telling her stories. Your hair is like Goldilocks. Your lips are like something your ears are like something something but as soon as you send the message and tell her be strong in the lord and in the power of his might she'll rise up she say brother this is the door Ale, oh yeah go where you came from let's be there for each other if you are clapping go ahead and clap you need to help somebody let's be there for each other Let's be there. Let's care for each other so that we can grow strong together. If we are going to have true fellowship, my friends, let us stay together. No matter how spiritual you are, when you stay out of fellowship, after a while, your spirituality will come down. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Psalm 122, verse 1 hallelujah be glad when they tell you come to church church is not filled with perfect people 
but church is the best place where you can be hallelujah so don't encourage don't tell the person that oh this church they are too something every church is too something every church you go to there will be people who are too something but the spirit of the lord is in the church so don't focus on those who are too something focus on those who are true fellowshipping fellowshippers with you hallelujah the best people i tell you the best you can find the best people in this church and you must declare it you can find the best people in this church when you look in second corinthians chapter 6 from verse 14 down to verse 18 the bible tells us something and i'm going to speak to a few people it says no be not unequally yoked with unbelievers there's no fellowship between righteousness and unrighteousness and there's no communion between light and darkness so don't stay away from fellowship with believers hallelujah don't let your best friends be people who do not know christ it will not help you let me hear somebody say amen, amen. verse 15 and what concord or agreement has christ with Belial, or what part has he that believed with an infidel we are saying that true fellowship is staying together staying with other believers not with unbelievers hallelujah no matter how nice they may look like it is a bit of a tragedy sometimes my friends and i say this with some pain in my heart that sometimes in the church we find people who are supposed to be our brothers and our sisters and actually their behavior towards us is even worse than people who are outside the church hallelujah haven't you met if there's any tailor here don't get at me if there's any seamstress here don't get at me you are not the one i'm talking about haven't you come into the church and given your job to a christian tailor and told him that i am having my 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 dedication of my baby on sunday so i need this boo boo by saturday night and he will promise you in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit that your boo boo will be ready saturday 12 noon so you can try it before sunday and then you believe it and then at 12 noon you start calling him and his phone is turned off haven't you met a christian tailor like that And you may end up borrowing somebody's dress for the naming ceremony and sometimes you meet somebody who's not a believer and he says that i will meet you at 12 o'clock and five minutes to 12 he is there i'm saying this so that we will change hallelujah fellowship does not come automatically it takes a conscious effort hallelujah Am I speaking to so if you're a tailor, you are not what I'm talking about. I'm just using that as an example. But let us, and because of that, maybe that person may not come to church again. Because somebody in church disappointed him. Hallelujah. There are people in the church, young men and young women, people who have stopped coming to church because somebody, a person came to visit in church and then you met the person hello hello try to visit the person and started telling the person stories and telling the person i will marry you when maybe you're already married somewhere when the person finds out the person gets so disillusioned they won't come to church again may your actions not take somebody away from the church amen let us stay together the bible says in, yes, let's finish this one 16 i'm trying to keep within my time go ahead press the next one what agreement has the temple of god with idols 
for you are the temple of the living God as God has said I will dwell in them and I'll walk in them and I'll be their God and they shall be my people let's do up to the end therefore come out from amongst them be separate says the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I'll receive you and then verse 18 says and I will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and my daughters hallelujah our relationship with our father will be reflected in our relationship with each other in psalm 84 verse 1 i'm just you know just emphasizing the fact that we must learn to stay together huddle together find warmth and support from each other how amiable are their tabernacles O lord of hosts that means i like coming to the place where you are verse 2 my soul longed yea even fainted for the courts of the lord may your soul long for the courts of god even if it means we are meeting every day be in church be in fellowship when the bible says that we should offer our bodies as a living sacrifice in romans 12 verse 1 i believe that one 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 interpretation of that is that we must be where the people of god are don't be a charisma christian you come to church once a month let us not neglect our coming together because when we come together we can have some true fellowship somebody say amen i believe that true fellowship also means we must pray together pray together pray together pray together pray together second thessalonians chapter 3 verse 1 the apostle speaking second he says finally brethren pray for us hallelujah let's pray together when you pray for somebody it will be difficult for you to criticize the person too much hallelujah eh? let me not pick on choruses let me pick on everybody let's learn to pray together matthew chapter 18 18 to 20 it's talking about if two of us shall agree on anything as touching it whatever we bind on earth it will be bound let's pray when we start praying in clusters in this church there will be an explosion of the power of god in this place it will be true fellowship not only when we are having a formal meeting agree with your person oh today there's no official all night we are coming two or three of us we are coming here the altar is free let us come and call upon god we are all getting old we are not seeing our way clearly instead of discussing and gossiping church people there are no old people enough to marry us in church when i look at the people in the church nobody is my class nobody is my size nobody is my weight nobody is my level instead of saying that say my sister we are all in the same situation the altar is there let us pray hallelujah and god will answer our prayer true fellowship is praying together it's praying together praying together you see this sister she has challenges instead of the, you the we the we the so-called mature people organizing ourselves and passing judgment this girl her dressing is not good you know i can see her you know she's got a mommy water spirit i can see i can see i can see mama. then we are then we are we are we are we are, we are the pharisees and the sadducees oh yeah this one too i can see she's got uh, uh, what uh, flying spirit this one too i can see she's got a uh, 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 underground spirit call them say that we are connected together Come and let's pray come and let's pray prayer changes things true fellowship is we are praying together we have even the apostle paul said that beloved brethren pray for us how many people are you praying for but how many people are you talking about may there be true fellowship in the church we can only pray together if we have a relationship with god our father this morning god has brought you here 
he has brought you here so that you become part of his family the foundation of any true fellowship is our relationship with Jesus Christ so this morning as you have come here you've heard this word you realize you don't have a relationship with Jesus he's not your savior he's not your Lord you come to church you're a good church goer you have friends who also come to church but deep in your heart you know Jesus is not the Lord of your life as our eyes are closed as our heads are bowed down in respect to the presence of God somebody needs to say yes to Jesus somebody needs to say that today I want to enter the fellowship of the house of God I want God to be my father I want to be able to say that if Christ comes tonight and the names are called up yonder my name will be one of those names thank you for listening to the message visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you. Thank mm-hmm. you.